Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about gluconeogenesis. So what is gluconeogenesis? We are going to learn what is gluconeogenesis. So under normal conditions, normal conditions, carbohydrates are converted to glucose. But when there is a depletion of these carbohydrates, glucose is formed from non-carbohydrate like fats, amino acids and pyruvates. So these are converted to glucose in the absence of carbohydrates. So where does this process happen? This process happens mainly in liver. The main site is the liver but sometimes it also happens in kidneys. This is a bit of a lesser extent but most of it happens in liver. So what are the glucogenic, gluconeogenic enzymes? So the first one is pyruvate carboxylase second one is phosphoenol pyruvate carboxy kinase third one is fructose 1 6 bis phosphatase fourth one is glucose 6-phosphate. So these four are the main key enzymes for this gluconeogenesis process. So you must remember all these four enzymes. So now coming to the steps of gluconeogenesis. Glucose turns into glucose 6-phosphate. This is an irreversible reaction and next coming to the next reversible reaction fructose 6 phosphate and this is an irreversible reaction again fructose 1 6 bis phosphate this is an reversible reaction again phosphoenol pyruvate this is an irreversible reaction again it turns into pyruvate yeah this turns into pyruvate so all these things all these happens in cytoplasm all these reactions happens in cytoplasm cytoplasm but now this pyruvate the pyruvate which is produced it must go into mitochondria for the further reactions to happen so all this is cytoplasm and next coming to mitochondria pyruvate which is produced in cytoplasm it's transferred to mitochondria this is mitochondria it's transferred to mitochondria by the enzyme pyruvate carboxylase this is the first enzyme so it's useful in transferring of pyruvate which is produced in cytoplasm to the mitochondria next this pyruvate is turned to oxaloacetate the transferring and the conversion of pyruvate to oxaloacetate takes place with the help of pyruvate carboxylase so this oxaloacetate is again brought back to the cytoplasm oxaloacetate it's brought back to the 
cytoplasm and it's transferred to phosphoenol pyruvate this is just the precursor of pyruvate which we learned here here phosphoenol pyruvate it's the so this oxaloacetate is turned back to phosphoenol pyruvate with the help of enzyme phosphoenol pyruvate carboxy kinase so this is a second enzyme which we learned so this is helpful in the conversion of oxaloacetate to the phosphoenol pyruvate next this fructose 16 bisphosphate is turned into fructose 6 phosphate with the help of fructose 16 bis phosphatase it is a third enzyme so because it is an irreversible reaction this enzyme helps in, in it to turn into fructose 6 phosphate and the next enzyme turns glucose 6 phosphate to glucose the en the enzyme required is glucose 6 phosphatase it is the last fourth enzyme so this is a basic gluconeogenesis pathway but we learned that glucose can be formed with the help of other three substances like propionate lactate and glycerol so how glucose is formed from these substances what are the substances first propionate from propionate propionate how this gluconeogenesis happen it actually turn propionate actually turns into succinyl sorry succinyl coa and this happens in krebs cycle this happens in krebs cycle now coming to the second one lactate lactate it is converted directly into pyruvate with the help of lactate dehydrogenase and the third one glycerol it is converted to glycerol 3 phosphate this glycerol 3 phosphate is converted to dhap and this dhap is converted back to fructose 16 bis phosphate this fructose 16 bis phosphate here okay so glycerol is converted to glycerol 3 phosphate glycerol 3 phosphate is converted to dhap and dhap is converted back to fructose 16 bis phosphate so this is a gluconeogenesis process